here we go. All right. Hey guys, Berman here, and um, I'm finally making a tutorial on how to motion track in Sony Vegas, and just uh, ways on how I do it because it's actually a lot easier than people would think it is. Um, it's more of a trick, really. Like, there's no kind of like special like plug-in to use for it. I'm still gonna do it the normal way that other people have made tutorials on, but I'm gonna show you the way on how I do it, and maybe that'll help you. And it also makes it look like it is motion tracked very well even though really it's not and you just have to kind of eyeball it but you know even with me if you really like stare like once I show you um how to motion track like this if you look at the ends of like the words I guess I mean that doesn't make too much sense right now but once I get into the tutorial you'll understand but you can see that they're kind of moving because they're not dead on but anyways um the way I'm going to motion track this cinematic so I'm going to have text over here under this basketball hoop and spinning camera angles in Sony Vegas is the hardest way to motion track at all and I don't really feel like spending 30 minutes on this motion track and the camera angle does eventually line up with the basketball hoop right here so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna go back a little bit and I'm gonna just put a marker here and I'm gonna have the text for the motion track fade in so I'm gonna insert a new video track I'm also going to disable resample the clip and I'm going to go to media generators you can do legacy text or titles and text I just do legacy text because I have my presets and uh, I'm just going to I'll use alien league I guess it's more of a, a straight kind of way and it's a good way to practice and next we're going to do is you're going to want to come over to compositing mode and set it to 3d source alpha that's going to allow you to spin the text in many different ways but first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the text kind of fade in about there split the text right there and I'm not going to have it fade in yet because you're going to see the camera angle still kind of switches so you're going to want to miss with pan and crop on the size hold on also um, I don't know what's with my Vegas but if you guys can see I can't move the pan and crop up or down. I can only move it directly side by side. So if you guys want to fix that, let me know. But um, anyways, ignoring that. Uh, with this doing like motion tracking, it's really if you want to get a good one, um, you have to put a lot of time into it. But anyways, um, so to start off like with spinning the text, you uh, want to go here to track motion. And it's gonna open up this window, and you can see. You can play with the text like that, you know, make it spin side to side, and about there looks good. Because what I'm doing is I'm trying to line the S up with the pole, because I'm going to move it over. And see the direction of the hoop right here? I'm trying to make that kind of line up well, too, to where it's kind of going the same direction, so like that. And now what I'll do is I'll go to when it's going to first start fading in. Go to pan and crop. I'm not going to be able to move it up and down, obviously, so only side by side. And if I move it over here, then text gets much bigger. So now what I need to do is try and keep the size right when the camera angle moves. And the best way to do this is just try and see like um what like look, look around and see like what you can compare the size to. It's really not that good of a motion track, but you know that's the best that I can think of and that's what I do so first um, let's go over here to where you know because by now since this is where a second marker is the um, text is supposed to be full so actually let me copy and paste it in attribute so it doesn't just completely drag over it's going to keep going that way so now this is you know the second marker is where the text is going to be fully faded um, you know out of the fade offset so just to make this easier, I'm going to have the S basically hugging the pole like that, just so it's easier to try and keep it the same. Okay, I'm creating circles and pan and crop now, I guess. I'll go back one frame so I can see. And I just messed up. Alright. I need. I forgot to remind you, make sure to turn on um, your sync cursor, that's easier. 
to do and when you move the sync cursor it uh creates an automatic keyframe for you and do that so now I gotta do the first part again this is yeah this is ex exactly why I hate motion tracking it's just takes forever but anyways got the sync cursor on so now we can actually line it up so get the S to kinda hug it and move that over so now you can see make sure I can ram preview you can see now if I was to ram preview the text kinda stays at the same spot you know but only for a second and then it jerks back over here but so now we can just do that and do the fade offset in so you know the normal cinematic would go and then the text appears and now what we need to do is copy this again paste it in attributes so the text will stay in the same spot which it did not so <laughs> I guess what we can do is just have it hug again the pole let's move it over and then the fast and really easy way to do this is um, you can go to in the cinematic cinematic or when the pole ends so like the S is hugging so about right there th where the frame or not the frame um, the pole exits you know like the final bit of the screen is where we can end our motion track really so just kinda go ahead and move it over to hug the pole again split the clip and then we can have the rest have it look slowly fade offset. I don't know how that would look. I'd probably have to fade this part off, but with that um click of the tutorial, I already have that motion tracked. And then if you really pay attention to it, you can see that it looks like the text moving back the text is moving backwards because the camera's getting closer to the um basketball hoop and everything else. So all everything in the background's getting bigger. Well the text is staying the same size. So what you could do is you could also go to the last frame and then kinda zoom in a bit and see how that helps and see now it's getting too big and it's a really a trial and error guys it really is it's it's really ridiculous on how much you have to do trial and error but it is what it is. Move the frame back. Let's see what it looks like now. See, that looks pretty good. It still kind of looks like it's moving backwards. Because now what I'm noticing is you can see it kind of looks like it's spinning. So then, you know, that's when you'd go into here and then um, you'd keyframe it. Kind of. Oh, wrong one. kind of move with it like that so now we can see what it looks like again and I'm just gonna however it looks right now I'm just gonna keep it yeah see that actually looked really good still kind of moves but you know it's not that noticeable if you're watching it especially if you put a color correction on but I'm gonna fix this fade offset and just do that just looks cleaner Alright, and then you can just put a color correction on. Uh, do that. You can't read the text, so I guess you could, um, you just go in here and change the color of it. But I'm gonna take the color correction off, do a different one, much easier to see. Use that text, and then you can, with the color correction, it looks like, um, what is it? What am I trying to say? Looks like it's not moving as much, but what I'd recommend is uh, if you're in a motion track, batch render it, and I'll show you exactly why. You're gonna see with the vignette, see how it's kind of darker. You know, not all the color corrections like this, but it's only gonna affect the clip. It's not gonna affect the text. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna show you how to batch render, and I'm gonna start rendering, and I'm gonna pause the tutorial, and I'll be right back when it's done rendering to show you um, the difference between the two 
when you batch render and put a color correction on, then just put a color correction on the clip. But anyways, here's like the kind of final motion track. Alright, so um, the way you'd batch render is you highlight what you want to render. So I'll just highlight, I'll just render this part from here to here. And um, batch rendering is very helpful in editing, especially when you're trying to do those careful keyframes like keyframing um, Twixer or splitting the clip Twixer. So uh, I'm just going to do my normal render settings. And to do batch render is you select render loop region only. And so what that's going to do is, you know, this is pretty much called the loop region. Everyone just says that they highlight it though because it's kind of worldwide on that. You just say you highlight it, you don't say you loop region it. Anyways, that's what this is, it's a loop region, so you're only rendering what is highlighted. And I'm going to pause the tutorial fast, let this render, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, you guys, I'm back, and you can see uh, we have the final, like, rendered out motion track here. And I'm going to show you the difference on why it's smarter to render the motion track out without any color correction or edit at all except for the text is because if we put our color correction on right here, you can see the text stays exactly the same. And when it moves into the dark, you know, where the vignette is, it still stays bright and it looks kind of bad. With uh, it already rendered, you know, with the text, when you put the color correction on, the text is going to be color corrected as well, and it's going to match. So when it does move into dark, it will get darker. You see how it does that? And it just matches the edit much better. You can see the difference here. It just flows better, really. It just looks a lot more cleaner. But anyways, that was my motion tracking tutorial and just some tips on how I motion track it's not the best but it is pretty good especially if you don't know the trick to what I do it's almost unnoticeable but that is what I do to motion track if you guys could leave a like that would be great anyways thank you for watching peace